welcome to Focusing on God's Word with Pastor Everton Jeffers. Focusing on God's Word illuminates the Word of God by explaining the Scriptures and conducting word studies using Scripture to support Scripture in the revelation of His Word. Matthew eleven fifteen said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. As he ministered to us today, here now is Pastor Everton Jeffers. Present good day once again. It is a joy to be back with you on Focusing on God's Word. I want to take this time out today to say to all of you who listen to this program, a very special thanks to you and especially to those of you who listened and also shared. I know that it has been a blessing to many of you because many of you have called, many of you have seen me and told me how the program is a blessing to you. If the program is a blessing to you, please continue to share. Today, I want us to look at a topic that I believe all Christians and non-Christians should be aware of. This topic is one that will determine a lot of things and I want you to listen. I want you to grab someone by the hand, find one of your relatives and tell that relative, listen, you need to hear this. Today we're going to be focusing on what makes the Christian life difficult to live. What makes the Christian life difficult to live? Many shy away from the Christian life because for some, it is almost impossible to live. While others shy away because after starting the journey of going to church and they see what it entails, they turn away and never return. Now, Jesus made a point in Luke chapter 14. This is not what we're going to be looking at, but he made this point in Luke chapter 14 and verse 28. And this is what he said. So don't follow me without considering what it will cost you. For who would construct a house before first sitting down to estimate the cost to complete it. I want to look at a number of things today why the Christian life is so difficult to live and having completed this, I hope it will give each person a different view than they had before. The first thing that I want to focus on is the Christian life is difficult to live because we want to live the Christian life ourselves. And that might sound funny, but it is not. And I will show you why it is so. The key to living the Christian life is not something, but someone. Uh, what do you mean by that, Pastor? The key to living the Christian life is not something it is not really something you do, but it is someone. It is the Holy Spirit. And that is the key to living the Christian life and living it successfully. When we rely on ourselves to live the Christian life, the harder we try, the more we fail. Because to live the Christian life, Certain things must happen first. In John chapter 3, verses 3 and 7, this is what it has to say. Do not be surprised, Jesus talking to Nicodemus, that I told you, you must be born again. Now, I cannot leave it at just, you must be born again. I must explain what it is to be born again. Because this is the key to overcoming the difficulties of living the Christian life. 
To be born again means to be reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and sanctified. So when Jesus told Nicodemus that he must be born again, you see, Nicodemus wanted to live the Christian life by himself. Totally impossible. None of us can live the Christian life outside of Christ. And so Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be reborn from above. You must be spiritually transformed, renewed, and sanctified or set apart. That's the journey to live the Christian life and be able to overcome it with all of its difficulties. In order to live the Christian life, we must be given the ability to do so through the Holy Spirit being born from above. If we have not the Holy Spirit, the harder we try to live the Christian life is the more difficult it would become. If this does not happen, we will never be able to live and live the life without wanting to give up. And to explain this in more depth, let's look at a man who actually had all of the struggles and have been through all of the difficulties and came out successfully, lived it throughout, hardly complained, and at the end gained the crown. Listen to what he said. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, Brother Paul, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. That is, in him I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live. I want you to notice what Paul is doing here. But Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith. This is, this is, this is really when we start living the Christian life. Paul says the life that I now live in the body, I live by faith. Listen to what it means, living by faith. By adhering to, relying on, and completely trusting in Christ, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Notice what Paul says. It is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. If you're going to live the Christian life and be able to overcome and go past the difficulties, Christ must live that Christian life in you. If you try to do it by yourself, you are going to fail. And that's why he says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who live the Christian life in me. Every time Paul tried to live it, Paul faced difficulties. And the second thing that we're going to be looking at today, we're going to see how Paul showed us that Christ has to live it and not us. When we try, let's see what happened in the second thing, why the, the Christian life, is difficult to live. Second reason why it is difficult to live. We have an enemy who lives within us. The Christian life is difficult to live because we have an enemy who operates from within. We have many enemies fighting us from without. But they are outside. But we have an enemy that fights us from within. And that's where the difficulties lie. And I'm going to show you what Paul said in Romans chapter 7 and verse 15. 
I also want you to notice the amount of times Paul used I in Romans 7 15. He says, For I do not understand my own action, one eye. I am baffled, two eye, and bewildered by them. I do not practice, three, what I want to do, four, but I am doing the very thing, five, that I, six, hate, and yielding to my human nature, my worldliness, my sinful capacity. Now I, seven, habitually do what I, eight, do not want to do. I, nine, agree with the law, confessing that it is good and morally excellent. Verse 17, so now, if that is the case, then it is no longer I, 10, who do it, the disobedient thing which I, 11, despise, but the sin nature that lives in me. This is every Christian greatest battle. I want you to notice what Paul is saying. When Paul, the man takes over and try to live the Christian life, Paul says, what I want to do, that is not what I find myself doing. What I want to practice, that is not what I find myself doing. This is part of the reason why the Christian life is so difficult to live. Because when we try to live it, all we keep doing is fail. If you notice in, in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, he says, if we are going to live it and be able to overcome the difficulties, then we will should no longer live, but allow Christ to live the Christian life through us. So in 7, Romans chapter 7, when you see him talking about this I and this I and this I and this I and this I, what Paul was saying is that when I try to, I fail. And I want to do what is right, but I fail. And I know the law is right, but every time I try to live it by myself, I fail. And what I want to do, that is not what I'm doing, which means, hey, I'm still failing. And hence, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 is so powerful because now to live the Christian life, it is showing us that our total reliance have to be on Jesus Christ. We cannot do it by ourselves. And that's the reason why we're seeing Romans 7, 15 and 17 showing us, Paul keeps saying, I, I, that life that he lived in the flesh, I, I, that's where many of us as Christians are failing because we do not learn what it is to rely on Jesus Christ, to depend on, to place our entire weight upon and that's how we're going to live the Christian life. It will still be difficult, but it will be bearable because it is no longer I, but Christ. The third thing that makes the Christian life a difficult life to live is because of the unwillingness of us as Christians and those who are going to come to Christ deny themselves. The life of the child of God is going to be difficult and if you're not, it's going to be difficult to come to Christ because if we are going to successfully live this life, if we are going to be able to see past the difficulties and go past it, we must be willing to deny ourselves. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, this is what it says. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wish to follow me as my disciple, he must, watch this, not he might, not he may, but he must deny himself. Now, this is difficult for any human to do. 
because we like to do our own thing. It's a natural thing for humans to do what they feel like. But Christ is saying to live the Christian life, if we are going to be able to go past the difficulties, we have to learn what it is to deny ourselves. And what it is to deny yourself? To deny ourselves means to set aside self-interest. Our interests cannot take priority over God's will or God's word. And many of us are struggling to live the Christian life or to allow Christ to live the Christian life in us. Because guess what happened? We are not willing to deny ourselves. And listen to what the verse continues to say. So we have to first deny ourselves. We have to second take up his cross, expressing our willingness to endure whatever might come. Now, which one of us like hardship? Which one of us like difficulties? None of us. And so we find that the Christian life becomes difficult to live because we fail and do not like to deny ourselves or to deny ourselves our self-interest. And this is where the problem comes. Watch what he says. So take up his cross, which means the willingness to endure whatever comes, and follow me. Believe in me, comforting to be my example in living, and if need be suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. Now, this is difficult. But if we allow Christ to live, then denying ourselves, become comforted by him, be delivered by him through the difficult times, will become easy because we now recognize that, listen, the life is not for me to live. I cannot any longer, when I give Christ my life, continue to treat it as if it is my own. I now have to allow him to have his way. The fourth reason why it is going to be difficult to live is the physical battles that we must face as believers every child of god faces a battle at least one battle per day and who constantly want to be in war or at war but when you live the christian life Sometimes the physical battle and the spiritual one sometimes can become difficult. Again, the emphasis must be back to Christ. And listen to what he says in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 8 and 9. We are pressured in every way. We are hedged in, but not crushed, perplexed, unsure of finding a way out. Sometimes... It's frightening to live the Christian life because the situations that we face in our lives, sometimes they are almost impossible. And sometimes we even find ourselves coming to the place where we think we can doubt God, that God is not able to take care of this particular one. There is no situation in our lives that God is not able to take care of. And so we are perplexed, unsure of finding a way out, but not driven to despair, hunted down, oh my goodness, and persecuted, but not deserted, or standing alone, struck down, but we are never destroyed. This is basically the life of a believer who lives close to Christ. And this is why 
the Christian life is so difficult to live because it, it's just like at times a period of constant battle. And in spite of me saying this, I want to make this and continue to reiterate this, that for us, it is impossible, but with Christ, we can do it and do it with peace and in comfort because he is the one that is now living it through us. So we see here that number four, the physical battles that we face, not only the physical, but also the spiritual one. Number five, the love for the world and the things that are in the world. The Christian life becomes difficult to live because some of us, even though we are born again, still have our arms and legs in the world. And I want you to picture yourself standing in the river with one leg and the other leg on the bank on a Russian river. See how difficult that is. That is exactly why some people say that the Christian life is difficult to live because they want to have both worlds and you cannot have both. You're either in one or the other or you are not. There's no neutral ground. First John 2 15 tells us this and it's very clear. Do not love or cherish the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, his love for the father, the love for the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh or the craving for sensual gratification and the lust of the eyes, greedy longing of the mind and the pride of life, assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly thing. These do not come from the father, but from the world itself. Now, if you think that what you have, your worldly goods, your name, your stature, and your position in life is of such. A lot of times, this is where the Christian life becomes difficult because now, once you think that you have you have it and that you have arrived many a times we look to ourselves instead of looking to christ and that's where we go back to the loss of the flesh craving for central gratification and the loss of the eye greedy longing of the mind and the pride of life these things will stop us from depending on Christ to live through us and place us at the forefront. And when the world is our focus, the Christian life becomes difficult to live. We cannot have both worlds. We must have one or the other. My advice to you today, choose Christ. Number six, prosecuted for doing what is right. Many people have a difficulty with this and even I as an individual sometimes feel that it is so unfair that you're living right and for living right 
you're persecuted for it. Listen to what Matthew 5, 10 says. Blessed, comforted by inner peace and God's love are those who are persecuted for doing what is morally right. For this is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. Now, this is a comforting verse. Because we know that this is not just speaking about earth, but it is saying that when um, we are persecuted for doing what is morally right, the kingdom of heaven belongs to us both now and forever. We should be able to be willing to go through as difficult as it might seem and not give up. You can always tell the person who are the persons who are truly born again because the truly born again never gives up when persecution time comes. What they do, they dig in because they know that at the end of the road and even here on earth, they are going to receive God's blessing, God's comfort, and God's inner peace. It is the inner peace that helps us to see past the difficulties that we are about to face or we are facing. And so we have to remember this. Now verse 11 went on to say, to say blessed and morally courageous and spiritually alive with life joy in God's goodness are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kind of evil things against you because of your association with me. You want me to tell you why? This is so difficult for some Christians because we want to keep our old friends instead of letting go some of them. Some of them are no good for us. And sometimes before you even let them go, they start saying evil things against you. People who sometimes you thought were your friends are willing to see you go down. And some of us, we stick with them. And this is why it's so difficult because our focus is not where it's supposed to be. Our friends are not who they're supposed to be. And some of those very same people, yes, we do have outsiders who are willing to see our demise and will do anything in their way. I mean, sometimes a week does not pass without some new accusation comes up against me. And you know something? I always tell myself this. I don't care sometimes what the human judges say in the sense of John Public judging me. What concerns me is what heaven's court have to say about me. If you begin to view life in that particular way, where you know that what people are saying about you is not so, don't ever get flustered and frustrated with people because they're doing their job. They are doing what their father wants them to do, the devil. Some of them even calling themselves Christians. Do it. Don't worry about them. The quote that you need to be worried about is the one in heaven. When he says you're guilty, no man can change it. And when he says that you are innocent, no man, regardless of what they do or say, can ever make you guilty. And so when we look at these things, we see that part of the reason why some people find the Christian life very difficult to live is simply because the persecution time is going to come. And when it comes, most of us, because we are living right, we believe that it should not happen. But we must remember we are living in a world where evil is and it is prevailing. 
but it is only for a time. And so we must stand fast and hold on to God's unchanging hand and the, the Christian life, as difficult as it might seem, will become a bit more comforting. Also, we must always remember God's promises for us. Number seven, and this is where I might stop for today and continue next week. Listen to what it says. Some of us hate discipline. Now, what does discipline have to do with the Christian life being difficult? Of course it has a lot to do because some people do not like to be chastened. But chastening for the child of God is good for a number of reasons which we are going to be looking at as I speak now. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 11, this is what it has to say. And you have forgotten the divine word of encouragement which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not make light of the discipline of the Lord and do not lose heart. Do not become discouraged then and give up when you are corrected by him. You, you, you notice what it is saying there? Do not become discouraged by him. Some of us, we don't like when our parents discipline us. We are wrong, but we just don't like discipline. But what we need to do is to focus on why we needed to be disciplined. And this is the same way that our father deals with us. He does it out of love. Watch this. Verse 6. For the Lord disciplines and corrects those whom he love and he punishes every son he receives and welcome to his heart if God is disciplining you as a Christian you should see that as a plus we should see it as God demonstrating his love correcting us when we step out of line because we need that we need to be disciplined and some people, when they are disciplined, turn their backs on God. Listen to what, listen, listen to what verse 6 says again. For the Lord discipline and correct those whom he loves, and he punishes every son he receives and welcome to his heart. We should not let the latter part of verse 6 happen and see it as difficult to live. Because listen to what he says. Do not lose heart and give up when you are corrected. Some of us are so selfish that what we do is that we tell ourselves that we know all and nobody can tell me anything. And I can, I rule my country and I do what I like. Let me say this. None of us knows everything. And sometimes we need correction and serious correction in order for us to go back onto the right path. Verse 7 says, you submit to correction for the purpose of discipline. You must submit to correction for the purpose of discipline. God is dealing with you as with son. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? As difficult as it might seem when we are corrected, God has our interests at heart. And if we allow him, the Christian life will not be as difficult as it seems, but more comforting because we allow him, instead of ourselves, to live. Next week, God spare our lives. We will do part two. 
And I want you to see the reasons why the Christian life appears so difficult to live. It is not because of Christ. It is basically because of us. We will look at next week. Anyone who live godly shall suffer persecution. That's where I want to start. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to Focusing on God's Word with Pastor Everton Jeffers, a Bible-based study revealing the Word of God. You can follow Pastor Jeffers on God's First Radio at 102.9 FM from 1 p.m. each Sunday or on Abundant Life Radio at 103.9 FM. You can also follow him on Facebook or the YouTube channel. Thank you once again for listening to Focusing on God's Word. May God continue to bless you.